Okay, this video is brought to you by the lovely people over at Squarespace who are helping me to continue offering free content and advice. So if you just want to show off your artwork online or start a new business venture, then you can make it with Squarespace. Okay, for those familiar with my other tutorials on this channel, you'll know that the app that I'm using is Procreate. I've opened an A4 canvas and in terms of the brushes, I'm using a soft airbrush. I will probably also use a medium airbrush as part of the tutorial as well. The colors that I'm going to be using are saved here. They will be down in the description of this video. All you need to do is look at the color codes, go to this section of Procreate, click on the value area, type in the codes that I've provided down in the description, put them here, and then you can start to piece together your own color palette like this. I do provide the color palette as a downloadable file, so you don't have to go to all the aggravation of typing in the codes and piecing it together yourself. All you need to do is become one of my patrons um, and that is available as one of the rewards for people who support me over at Patreon. Again, there is a link for that down in the description. So I'm going to start with the first color I've got selected on my first layer and I'm going to be using the soft airbrush. I'm going to turn the size of the brush up. So I'm going to use this blue gray color and I'm going to just fill in most of the sky area here. Um, there's going to be most of this background covered in this color, but I'm a bit reluctant to just simply fill in a flat color as the background layer. I find it, it tends to sort of kill the life of that layer. I think sometimes it's better to just have things that's not 100% perfect and it already gives it a bit more interest, a bit more life. Okay, next thing I'm going to do on my colors, I've got a color down here that's a slightly darker, warmer color. I'm going to turn the size of the brush down and turn the opacity down as well. And I'm going to start placing this color in uh, at the horizon point of my image. And I'm going to work that up into the sky as well. And I'm also okay to bring it down into the lower part of the picture. This is going to be covered up by a lot of future layers, but that's fine. I'm doing this more gradually. I've got it on a lower opacity, not completely low, but I'm also pressing on lightly too. So you've got the mixture of the opacity not being on full, plus the fact that I'm not pressing on fully either. So that's just created a slightly more warm band through the middle, and I've just gone across it the other way as well. Okay, uh, the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create another layer for this. That can be the background shift of tone. It's gonna inform the rest of the piece, but for the background color, I've got three different uh, warm colors that are now going to go over that and it's gonna provide some of the highlights in the sky. So I have the warmest of my colors here. I'm go, going to stick to the soft airbrush still, but I'm going to start piecing in a bank of cloud that goes all the way across, maybe up in the corner slightly as well. And I'm also going to create maybe like a thin area here. So we've not got just one section of warm cloud, maybe we've got a couple of broken areas too. In fact, I'm not happy with that. I'm going to just move it up slightly. One of the beauty or the advantages of working digitally is that you can adjust something when you're not entirely happy with it. Okay, I'm going to again move on to the next color. I've got the yellow color for this. I'm going to stick to the soft airbrush yet again. And within the orange section, I'm going to be creating some yellow lighter areas now. Now, I'm being careful not to go right to the very edge. I want the orange to remain on the edge. And again, I'm using a mixture of pressure. So I'm using light pressure to begin with. You can probably notice that I'm using circular motions for this. And I'm pressing on a bit more in this area and then letting it fade out a little bit as well. Maybe increase the size of the brush. There's gonna be some light that I'm going to have going behind some of the details. I'm going to do some trees into this landscape. And then I'm going to add something of a slightly lighter area into this region. So there's going to be a strong sense of light coming from this area. But again, quite a lot of this is going to be obscured by more foreground features. I'm going to go back to my more orange color. I think I just want to further define some of these orange areas here. I want them to pick, be picked out a little bit more obvious. I want them to stand out a bit more. Now, since I've done this, I think I'm going to go back to that layer and I want to bring in some more of that tone and have it bit stronger in the background. I did press on very lightly to begin with, but now that I've started to add some of the orange highlights, I realize there's a need perhaps to do a stronger version of that color in the background. Like so. Now we can go back to my second layer, again using the orange and the yellow. 
going to use the yellow this time, turn the size of the brush down. I'm going to have, like I say, quite a narrow section here. Where we've got smaller bands of clouds, perhaps they're more distant, not too much actually. They're more distant, so they appear like narrower bands cutting across the sky. I'm going to stick to the orange a little bit more as well. Okay, right, the next thing I'm going to do, I probably will come back to that layer and add a bit more to it, but I'm going to create another layer now. And I've used all the sky colours, so I'm going to start applying some colours now that are going to be some of the foreground details. I've got two different tones of blue here, different strengths of blue. I've got a lighter one, which is the second colour. I think I'm going to use that one first, actually. Make sure I'm still on the correct layer. I'm on layer three, and this is going to be where the horizon is, the actual land starts. Maybe turn the size of the brush down. Maybe want to create a sense that there is a landscape here now. Turn the opacity up actually. Want this to be fairly flat. So I'm just going to cut across the whole scene. And I want it to fade out in this middle section, I think. I want that to appear like there's atmosphere, not giving you quite a, a truly defined horizon point. Maybe some bits like this are going to be a little bit more foreground, hence it's going higher up in the sky, or further up away from the actual horizon line. So this is, represents a closer region because, well, it's taller than this area. That's a good indicator. And I'm going to create some kind of features on the top of this scene as well. So just there's maybe a sense of some tree line, some spikes of trees sticking up, so it's not a totally flat area there. And then we can have them fading out here. I'm gonna do more of the features in this area that's gonna obscure, so I'm not too bothered about continuing it here. Besides which, maybe it gets further away here and it's a bit more misty. I really want the focus to be in this part of the horizon a bit more. Now, like I say, I've got two different tones, so maybe towards the, the bottom area here, or towards the edge, perhaps, we can have it a little bit darker in tone. Okay, I'm gonna create another layer. In fact, before I do that, I want to duplicate that layer. And this is gonna be the basis for reflection. I'm going to do a water scene, so it's probably like a lake. On this layer that I've just duplicated, now I can go to the transform area. I can now flip it vertically, and then I can move it so that it lines up pretty neatly with the layer there. So it creates something of a reflection. Now, almost straight away, we've got a sense of a landscape now and water as well. So I'm going to leave that, I probably will merge those later on, but for now I'm going to leave that as it is. I'm going to create another layer on top, and I'm going to go back to my colours, and I'm going to go to the next darkest blue, and this is now going to be some features in the landscape, on the horizon. Whoops, I need to turn the size of the brush down for this. In fact, I'm going to change the brush to a medium brush for this, because it's more foreground details, I want the details to be sharper. So I'm going to introduce some forms here, sense of land. And I'm going to do some features that are sticking out as well. So I'm creating the shapes first and then I can always go into it and add more detail to it later. But I just want to create the general effect to begin with. Maybe we'll have a little bit of a, an island that sticks out here a bit further or a bit closer to us. With some shrubs and bushes on it perhaps. Not too much. And then I'm going to do something over this side as well. So we're going, again, we're going to have it maybe, in fact, we're going to do two areas. I'm going to do one that's slightly more distant, some more on the actual horizon line. And I think I'd like to do some trees on the here as well. So I'm going to create a sense of some land that they're going to grow from. So you can see I've not got it on full opacity. I'm going to turn the opacity up. In fact, it's going to create a slightly flatter. And I think I'm going to do some trees here as well. So I'm going to start with the trunks. So it's wider at the bottom and then it gets narrower towards the top. Maybe some smaller trees towards the edge. I'm trying to very deliberately not have them necessarily go straight up in the air. You can have slight leans this way and that.
and I might go back to this area as well and maybe add some trees into here too. Now once I've got a sense of trunks I want to add some foliage to it. Now I'm just going to go from left to right. If you've seen me do this kind of tree before it's just quite an impressionistic sense of trees creating the effects rather than getting too bogged down in the actual finest detail. If you keep sort of moving left to right, keep it quite random, some blobs here, some blobs there, maybe leave some gaps, then you'll start to create the effects of different kinds of pine trees. Maybe you've got a smaller one here. Maybe a bush. Keep the pencil moving. As soon as you start to freeze up too much, you'll get too precious about each and every little mark. I think sometimes to work quickly and almost kind of blur your vision so that you're getting a sense of the overall form whilst you're working, you'll start to identify areas that are not quite looking right as you're working and then you can just amend them whilst your hand is constantly moving. If you know you've made a mistake, it's easy enough to undo digitally. You can just, especially in Procreate, you can just double tap your fingers or tap with two fingers and it will take you back. I dare say there are brushes that you can use to create this kind of texture, but honestly, really, it doesn't take that long. So I prefer to do it by hand if I can. There are shortcuts that are worth doing sometimes, but when it comes to things like this, I sometimes think that brushes, they can create useful textures at times, but more often than not, they look like a brush texture. And I don't really want to produce pieces of work personally, where it looks like the tool's done the work. That's just my own take on the matter, but everyone is obviously able to decide for themselves on that front. And then maybe as we come further down, we're gonna get, maybe it's obscured by some more branches here. So we can have the foliage, the density starting to pack in, less, let light, less light through. If you've seen me do these kind of tutorials, you'll know that these don't necessarily stand up to very close scrutiny. That's not the purpose of the tutorials. I try to keep it stuck at this point, so it's zoomed out a little bit more, so that I can show you how to create the effect. And then if you wanna spend more time on the actual detail, refining little branches, individual tiny sections and details, then obviously you're more than free to do that. But hopefully if I show you how to create the, the lighting and the effect, then it's gonna make the, the overall effect of your work a little bit stronger. Don't get me wrong, I, I absolutely love getting lost in an image and I do tend to spend hours and hours and hours with my own work to a ridiculous point at times. So don't get me wrong, if I was presenting this as my finest, best example of work, then the state I'm going to leave it at at the end of this tutorial is not necessarily what I would consider a finished piece of mine. But that's not to say that you can't create a convincing and successful effect within that space of time. I'm just creating some slightly lighter trunks to go in the background. I'm closing up some of these areas with detail. Okay, I'll come back to that. Um, I'm going to do something in the foreground anyway that was probably going to obscure a lot of that. So I don't want to get spending too much time on that if it's going to be covered up anyway. I'm going to move to this side, start adding some more to the trees here. Because I think these are going to be pretty much more exposed and not covered up as much. People often ask me how I come up with the color palettes that I'm using. The answer to that is that I will look at photographs and I will um, use the color or the photo references to guide my color scheme. I will never copy an image exactly, but the color scheme is definitely something that's useful to take inspiration from a photo. I spent ages in the past copying photographs faithfully and, and quite frankly I just find it a little bit boring. The enjoyment for me is when you get to create your own fictional image. So the colours can guide you from a photograph but then the fun is to make your own version I think. So if you are copying these tutorials by all means copy the effect but don't feel that you have to copy every single tiny detail the same. Have fun make it your own version. I 
Okay, I'm going to create another layer at this point. In fact, before I do that, I'm going to do exactly what I did on the layer underneath. I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to, whoops, I'm going to go to the transform, flip it vertically and then move these down. In fact, I'm going to slightly squash that in a little bit more. Wow often happens in reflections is that you get a slightly more condensed version of the image in front of you. So a slightly more squashed version of the image at the top. Perhaps not too much, but just a little bit. I also quite like the fact there's a bit of a gap there because that suggests perhaps an area where there's a slight bit of disturbance in the water um, or mist that's low lying on the surface. It actually benefits the effect quite a lot. So I'm going to create another layer now. I'm going to go to my colors. I'm going to go to the dark Blue, not quite the black, but the dark blue this time. And I'm going to create another area of land. So I'm going to turn the brush up slightly, turn the opacity down a little bit. I'm going to create another area where trees can grow from. And this is, by contrast, really quite dark. So I'm not going to do any over this side. I think I'm just going to concentrate it over here. So maybe I'm going to move it further down, something like here. Again, I'm going to begin by drawing some tree trunks, slightly wider at the bottom, and then they get thinner as they go up. They're going to obscure the trees that were behind. They are, even though they're closer up, they, ordinarily they would appear bigger, but they're also growing at the end of this little section that's close to the water. So it might be that you're getting a few trees that are a little bit smaller here in actual fact. If I did a massive tree on the edge there, it might look a little bit strange. I can have one that's a little bit taller, but you don't tend to get the absolutely vastly huge trees right on the water's edge. So we've got to balance the need for a foreground image with the reality of the kind of, or the sense of location as well. Is it likely to be a huge tree right on the water's edge? It's probably not, but they can be a bit taller. A little bit further back like this one, then definitely it can be, get taller. Okay, I'm going to now start adding more things growing off it, just like I did in the background. I might want to spend a little bit longer on some of these areas that are growing from it. Again, these are going to be more foreground, so perhaps they need to come under slightly closer scrutiny. Take a bit more care. Maybe some branches here and there that stick out. When it comes to this slightly, or not slightly, much larger tree, perhaps I can just have some branches that are starting to emerge here at the bottom. You're going to be more aware of any individual branches when it's much closer to. Don't have to worry quite so much about the other ones there, but when it's a bigger version and it's nearer to, then you need to perhaps just include the individual branches too. Maybe you don't need to do quite as much here because it perhaps only starts a little bit higher up. Okay, I'm going to do exactly the same thing as I did before. I'm going to duplicate it, go to the transform, flip it vertically, and then move it down. And then we've created something of a, a reflection there too. So what I'm going to do with these layers is I'm going to merge them together. So we've got the two top layers there, the two next layers, and the two layers underneath. So now we've got them here, you can see, of those different layers. I'm also going to go to the sky layer, and I'm going to duplicate that now. And I'm going to transform that one and bring it down.
Okay, I notice now there's a section down here because I've got the warmer colors there. I think what I'd like to do is extend some of these colors down into the actual water as well. It's appearing too light now that I've got the two to compare together. So I'm gonna go back to the original layer, all that kind of warmth was on. I'm gonna go back to this second color, which was the main color from there. And I'm gonna add a bit more of it into the, the water area as well. And I think that's gonna just help reflect it a little bit more. I'm also going to go to some of these sections to use a trick where you can start to go onto the rectangle draw tool, find the area that you want to change like that. I can then go to the adjustments and go to motion blur and I can start to add a little bit of blur to that. So it just creates a sense maybe that there's slight disturbance in the water and that's going to just create a sense that that's not quite as crisp and as clear as the background. I'm going to do the same for the other layers. I could have done this before when there were separate layers, but I'm just showing you the fact that you can do things afterwards. So again, I'm going to go to the draw or selection tool, make sure I'm on rectangle, and you can start to draw the rectangle for the areas that you want to affect. Go to the adjustments, motion blur, and you can start to increase the amount of blur that you add to it there. And the same for the last layer, if it's necessary, which I'll just do a little bit again. So I just want to make sure I'm on the rectangle, draw it across, Go to the motion blur and just add a little bit more blur to the thing. And now it definitely has a different quality down there in the water than it does at the top. Now what I'm going to go do is go back to the top layer. I'm going to go to my different colors. I'm going to use this slightly lighter blue here. It's not the lightest of the blues, but it's definitely going to be a bit lighter than the, the darker of the, the blue lands. I'm going to go back to my soft airbrush. In fact, I'm going to create a sense that maybe there's some mist in here. Can also go back to this other layer and I want to maybe just lighten up this area so I can steal the color from the background there, start to go over it here. I mean, I could use an eraser, I suppose. Let's, in fact, let's do that. So we'll go to this layer, we'll use the eraser, turn the opacity of the eraser really down, check what we're on. We'll also put it to the soft airbrush, in fact, for the eraser. Because remember, with as well as the settings for the brushes, your eraser has different brush settings as well. So it's important to bear that in mind when you're actually using the eraser. So I want to make the reflections a little bit lighter in areas. So the less apparent perhaps than the section above the water, just in areas, just a little bit softened. And that tends to work a little bit better. I could use that same effect in fact, for the one at the top. So I could go on and erase that slightly. Like so. So that's the overall effect. I'm going to spend a little bit of time just tidying up some of the details. So I'm going back to the sky layer. In fact, I want the one that's at the top. I've got my lighter of the yellow colors and I'm just going to start feeding some more of it into the background. I'm also going to use the orange, or the slightly more orangey color anyway. I think what I'd like to do is go to the layer of trees that's in the background there and I think I'd like to perhaps just introduce a bit more of that orange in areas too, as well as the yellow. Go back to my sky layer, maybe add some smaller highlight details in the sky. Okay, I'm going to leave that particular tutorial there. I think it's got the overall effect. Again, it's something you can go into more detail with, but in terms of creating the, the colour schemes and the general impression of the landscape, then I'm going to leave it at that point. Please check out my other channel if you're interested in something a little bit more collaborative, then I've got another channel, which again will be down in the description. In that channel, I'm going to offer up my own drawings in which you can then download the drawing, add your own colors, textures, send them back to me and I'll feature them on a follow-up video. That is for my second channel. For this channel, it's going to be mainly tutorials. So again, if you're interested in more creative stuff, please do check that out. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, this video is brought to you by Squarespace. I wasn't going to get involved in sponsorships from any companies or any organizations that I didn't feel were relevant to my subscribers, but as an artist, as a creative person, then 
having a website that gives you a way of showcasing your work and potentially selling it is going to be really, really important. So I've been looking really with great interest over at Squarespace because I'm, I'm due for a refresh and everything I've seen over there so far looks really pretty awesome. Designer templates, loads of choices. So I think whatever your style, whatever your creative kind of vision, there's going to be something that suits your work and shows it off really well. You can just sort of log in, you don't need to install anything so no patches or upgrades ever required. 24-7 award-winning customer service. For some of you, if you want to sell your artwork or whatever it is you want to sell, then you can create online stores there as well. So if you want to head over to Squarespace for a free trial and when you're ready to go and launch, you can go to the link that's down in the description and you can save 10% off your first purchase. Okay, hope you've enjoyed this week's video. I shall catch you back here very soon.